Norway has always been famous for having very humane prisons and also punishments, but yet uh, there was a time here in Norway when sending someone to gallows for a witchcraft was actually quite a normal thing. Today's story will bring us to Bergen, the second largest city of Norway where I happen to live. And not so many people actually know that there's an area in Bergen that's famous for its dark history of gallows. Moreover, this is not just a simple story about Bergen's gallows. This is going to be a story about famous Bergen's witches. Hello, my friends. I hope you missed me because I certainly did miss you. You must be wondering where was I? Why wasn't I uploading? So I was taking, let's say, a creative break and a little secret. I've been working on one project. I hope it will work out at the end. Uh, I will not give out any spoilers, just telling you that if you like my YouTube channel, most probably you will also appreciate that project. <laughs> Uh, that being said, it's October, and October is usually the month when everyone gets crazy about devils, paranormal, and witches. Speaking about witches, that's today's topic, and most probably also next video's topic. Uh, so it's Halloween, and I have this little tradition on my channel happening every October around Halloween time that's called Lighthouse Halloween Edition. That being said, I'm not celebrating Halloween, I'm like not very into that, but since everyone's making a fuss about it, I created my Lighthouse Halloween edition. And this year's Halloween edition, third season of it, uh, will be dedicated to witches. And I'm going to share some interesting stories coming from Scandinavia, more specifically Norway, more specifically Bergen. Yes, the city where I am living. It was like double interesting for me to research this topic because now I know the dark history from Bergen from the time when there were witch hunts happening here. And so let's jump into it. In Bergen there's an area that's called Nurnes and for many tourists nowadays it's just a peninsula shaped area in Bergen that has a lot of attractions. For example, Aquarium of Bergen, also it has some departments of Bergen University College, also it's a place for the Department of Fisheries and also it has this like a totem or a monument that's dedicated to Seattle, which is like a friendly city of Bergen in the United States. So. It's kind of a very busy, attractive area. It also has some architectural monuments. So certainly worth visiting, but it has a very, very dark secret. This was an area where a lot of unjustified deaths took place. Many men and also women were punished to death, burned, because this was also the spot of Nurnes Gallows. All around the world you can find documents that tell you the crazy story about witch hunts. People were obsessed with it, but in general it was just a fear. It was a fear that was seeded in their minds and made them turn against their relatives, friends, neighbors, brothers and sisters, and all of this resulted in huge amounts of innocent deaths. All of this came from the Christian beliefs that witches are servants of devils, therefore they should be killed. And people who reported on their friends and relatives, it was considered to be a Christian duty. In Europe, the oldest uh, witch trials date back to allegedly 13th century, but in Norway, the oldest witch trial allegedly dates back to the year 1592. All of this witch hunt basically, in simple words, happened because of Pope Innocent VIII, who kind of was pushing forward his creation, his document, that kind of made people to start hunting these people who were allegedly witches. And as I said, from the 16th century and for the following hundred years, a lot of witch trials took place in Norway. There are around 900 documents mentioning those witch trials and today's story will be one of those many stories that took place during that time when an innocent woman was trialed and burnt to death. In the year 1594, three women were executed in Bergen. Dittis Ronke, Anne Knutsdatter and Johanne Jensdatter Flamske 
We are going to talk about Johanne. It is not known who exactly accused her, however, I assume it can be anyone who had something on her, like hate or jealousy. I will now tell you what is known about the trial, and you can judge yourself about the cruelty, whether Johanne was indeed guilty. Now, before we look into Johanne's case, I have to mention this uh, man. His name was Absalon Pedersen Bayer. He was a priest, he was a humanist, he was an author, and he was also working on a document that kind of wrote down and documented all of the executions happening in Bergen during the time span of 1500 up to 1600. So the book was called Bergen's Capital Book, basically Bergen's Execution Book. And this book also includes the case of Johanne. Now, I am mentioning this man because it will also play an important role in the episode 2 of Lighthouse Halloween Edition, so remember this name. It will still be around during these witch trial stories from Bergen. Anyways, back to Johan. So, she was accused of being a witch. We don't know who did this, but anyways, she was there and she was kept inside the prison for interrogation. And we all know how these interrogations are happening. Basically, you are tortured and asked to confess that you are a witch. So, you basically have two options. You can confess and die quickly, or you just continue saying that you're innocent and you will probably die while you're tortured. And this was the case of Johanne. She suffered 19 painful interrogations, aka torture, and at the end she finally confessed, if we can call it a confession, because I think she was just giving them what they wanted. If you're wondering to what she was confessing to, then the story actually sounds quite crazy. And here it goes. So Johanna said that she had been in relationship with devil since she was a little child and the devil appeared to her in the form of a dog with red eyes. In some other occasions the devil took some other forms. For example, sometimes he came to her in the form of a creature that was kind of part human and part ox. Then she continued by telling that by the moment when she was already 18 she was in some intimate relationship with with an imp called Layut. If you're wondering what is an imp, because I certainly didn't know this name and I had to Google it. So basically it's somewhat like a bad fairy or something. If you watched uh, the TV cartoon Disenchantment, then that would probably be Lucy. So if you can Google that one, you will understand how an imp should look. In her confessions, Johanne said that in many occasions she was flying on the back of her imp uh, from Skien to Bergen through Hardanger Fjords to meet other witches on the mountains of Bergen. And she also said that the devil taught her how to fly and also the devil taught her how to do other nasty things to other people. And for example, one of the things that she was mentioning was that she was taught how to put worms and toads into bellies of other people so that they can die afterwards. I think that by this moment uh, Johanna was giving out all of her imagination, everything that just popped into her mind, she was just telling them. I think by that moment she really understood that she has to deliver. Otherwise, she is going to be tortured endlessly. Because who would believe her innocence? There was nobody to protect her. Now, there was also an eyewitness who came forward and told about the things that he saw Johanne was doing, and they were literally weird, literally like a witch would probably do. So this would kind of add some legitness to the story of her being a witch, but there's more to that, so... But first, what did this eyewitness said? So his name was Anders Rutland, and he said that he saw Johanne uh, on Thursday before the Easter riding a wolf. According to the Anders, she was sitting on the wolf in a wrong way. Like, she was sitting with the back to the wolf's head and holding his tail. And he said that he was so scared that he had to hide behind something. And literally, she just dashed past him 
on this wolf and it looked so strange and it literally according to him signifies that she could be a witch. Now you might think that an eyewitness stating something like this would probably contribute to the fact that Johanna is really a witch. Well, there is, as I said, more to this story and to this eyewitness. He actually came forward only after Johanna started to confess. So where were you Anders before? Hmm? For me, it seems like probably he just wanted to do something bad to this girl so he invented the story and came forward afterwards because like she already confessed like there's nothing to lose and the other option is that somebody asked him to do that like she confessed and they asked him could you please contribute and tell some kind of crazy story so we can finish this case and just burn that witch down you know all in all johanna was interrogated and tortured for four months in maximum security prison in Bergen. And while they did it, her feet and her head were put in a yoke and her hands were tied behind her back. I mean, I'm thinking that any normal person uh, being tortured for such a long time in this position, in these circumstances, would start to confess in whatever they're asked to confess. And so at the end, uh, this poor woman called Johanne was pronounced as guilty in witchcraft and she was sentenced to burning in Nurnes gallows. You must be thinking that this poor soul now finally could rest in a sense that it's finished. She will die and there will be no torture in her life. No, even her punishment took a while and it was long and painful. You see, she was put in a cart and dragged from the prison to the place where the gallows were, where she was supposed to get burned. And on the way to these gallows, this cart made three stops. Every time this cart stopped, it stood in a place for 30 minutes and during that time she was tagged with a hot iron. She had tag marks on her hand and also on both of her legs. And the priest that I mentioned before, who was documenting all of these execution cases, wrote that at that moment the witch screamed and cried, constantly. I bet she was. I bet. You can see that even on her way to the punishment, she was still tortured. And even her death was slow and painful. Let me explain how it happened. So when she was put on the place where she was supposed to be burnt, they kept the fire low so that there is no smoke, so that she would not die quickly, so that she would suffer longer and would not, let's say, suffocate from the smoke and would stay alive more longer and feel how she's actually burning. So it was really painful and it was really, really long. Poor Johan. I'm just like, poor Johan. And so this, in my opinion, and I think it also in your opinion, innocent girl was burned alive together with a letter or decree about witchcraft that was issued by King Christian IV, dating 1593, July 31st. And this is it. This is the story of a Johan. Innocent girl that was burned alive, tortured for a long time, and I think like I'm totally condemning the witch hunt, like it didn't have any meaning at all, in my opinion. In many cases, but not limited to that, it was just a fear of female power. And also it was a means of how to get rid of the remaining pagan tradition. I mean, many of these women who were accused of witchcraft simply knew the meaning of different herbs and how they can help your health. If we look at it from that, perspective even my grandma and even i i'm a witch because i know quite a lot about herbs and how they can help you with different symptoms when you're sick but that doesn't mean that i'm a witch i just know how to use nature in favor of me and how to be in line with nature if you know what i mean anyways guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this quite dark story historical story from the past about uh, the hunting of witches in norway specifically in bergen and let me know 
uh, what do you think about Johannes' case? And maybe drop a, in a comment section if you have any like historical which cases from the area where you live. And I'm really, really excited about the following episode within Lighthouse Halloween Edition. It's going to be one of the most loudest and well-documented Norwegian witch cases. So I do suggest you stay tuned, press the notification bell, because I know a lot of you have been skipping my videos just because you haven't pressed that button. So you don't see a lot of things that I'm posting here. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, I hope you are safe. I hope you are happy. Sending you Lots of hugs and love from Bergen. See you next time.